Earlier this year, a 22-year-old Australian student bought a 6,000-acre island with a castle on it. How much did he pay for it, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. Just £15,000. Quite a bargain? Well, there are one or two catches. I'll read you the estate agent's particulars to see if you can spot them. The island boasts beautiful beaches ripe for developing beachfront property. There's an old volcano with rumours of fierce creatures within. The outback is overrun with mutants and an area with a high concentration of robotic miners guarded by heavily armed assault robots. Hmm. The student bought an island that's entirely virtual. It only exists on the internet in a huge web-based game called Project Entropia. But it's an investment that should net him some real-world income. Welcome to the next big thing. Massive multiplayer online gaming. They may be computer games, but they've spawned a billion-dollar real-world economy where people buy and sell their virtual assets, like islands or weapons or books of spells. Millions play them, and it's a phenomenon that's intriguing financial analysts the world over. They work like this. The game's developers have a bank of computer servers on which they host a virtual world. This enables hundreds of thousands of players to meet up and play simultaneously. Even when you log off, the virtual world continues expanding and developing thanks to the efforts of thousands of other game players, all in different time zones. Indeed, certain games have been running continuously for over six years. But up until now, massive multiplayer online games have been the reserve of hardcore PC and Mac-based gamers. However, the next generation of consoles have been designed to handle them, and deals are being done left, right and centre by Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo to secure the big-name multiplayer games for their consoles. Those big names at the moment are Final Fantasy XI, secured for the Xbox 360, EverQuest, actually made by Sony, Star Wars Galaxies, also Sony, and the most popular game of all, World of Warcraft, a fantasy game that's only been around for a year or so, but already has over two million subscribers. I personally have been playing a massive multiplayer online game for about four years. It's called World War II Online Battleground Europe, the Virtual Battle Series Volume 1, Western Europe, 1940-42. Snappy title. I'm a non-commissioned officer in the British Army, Corporal Slaphead, and I'm free to roam a playing area that's over 11 million square miles. It covers much of Northern Europe in the 1940s, reproduced as faithfully as possible using GPS, archive photos and maps from the period. Right now, I'm camped outside a town called Musch. It's owned by the Germans. Every player that you see on this battlefield, Arrow, the guy in front of me, there's a, another player there up on the hill. He's in a panhard which is a very light armoured vehicle, see that? Pyro, his name is. All of these people and the Germans that we're fighting is like me, it's someone sat in front of their computer. They could be anywhere in the world, Japan, America, Germany, France. In fact, the guy driving the Jeep I've just hitched a lift on is actually sitting playing on his computer in New York. Thing to bear in mind again, the lorry, the guy at home who's paying his subscription every month just so he can drive a lorry. Okay, we're being buzzed by 109 and he's probably looking at me right now thinking, oh, I can shoot that guy. Hang on, let me try and shoot. There he comes. You can also hear in the background some AAA fire, anti-aircraft fire. There you go. Operated by a guy called Nutson 1. But in comes this 109. So the question is, will Nutson number 1 be a good enough shot to stop the 109 from delivering his bomb cargo right on top of Corporal Slaphead? Here he comes, look. You can hear him coming in. Well, I think that's a pretty definitive no. Nutson didn't come through for me. Each game follows a similar premise. The more success you achieve, the more wealth and status you accumulate. The trouble is, to really make progress in these things, you have to put in a lot of time. The proper addicts clock up 40 hours a week. Indeed, a couple of months ago in South Korea, an online gaming addict actually died after playing one game continuously for 50 hours. Some people haven't got the time or patience to spend that long training to be a Grand Wizard, but they are prepared to pay for it. And all the big massive multiplayer games have spawned a real-world trading market worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Real dollars. 
In Star Wars Galaxies, for example, it can take months of constant play to achieve the status of Jedi Knight. But you know what? I don't want to play for months and months just to experience wielding a lightsaber. And thankfully, I don't have to, because of eBay. Type Star Wars Galaxies into eBay and you'll find myriad items for sale. You can buy millions of credits for just a few quid. There are guides on how to become a Jedi Knight quickly. And of course, the chance to become one of the saviors of the universe overnight. Jedi Knight. This one would cost me at least 300 quid and comes with a range of skills and weapons. He's a master defender. He's also a qualified rebel pilot. That sounds good. And then we come to his lightsaber. Let's have a look. It's a full two-headed lightsaber, as well as sweep, swipe, strike, and throw moves. I haven't a clue what it means, but it sounds mean. The whole business of buying and selling assets has become so lucrative that there are now people who play these games professionally, playing intensively until they reach a desirable status, then selling that status and starting again. One chap I spoke to in Germany last week says that he can make 3,000 euros a week just by playing World of Warcraft every day. But Project Entropia takes it one stage further, encouraging players to make money. You simply convert your real-world money into Project Entropia dollars and then buy what you want, including islands, for £15,000. When you're bored of playing, which may be in 10 years' time, just convert your virtual money back into real-world cash. And if you've paid wisely, you could make a profit. Which now means that it's entirely possible to be a full-time, professional dragon slayer. How to become a pop star without leaving your bedroom. The cheapest and easiest way to print. The gold is then deposited onto the spoon. Oh, it's turning gold! Wow! It's alchemy. <laughs>